we are as states and as counties and as cities. Um, I know you all are watching carefully. The numbers have shifted over the last few days. Um, what happens when nations, um, when states change the reporting from confirmed to probable, so now all probable cases are included? They had to add them back in. Even though the cases may have been from March, they were added over 14, 15, and 16th of April. Um, and states may continue to be adding them. Eventually, we're hoping that those get accounted for on the day when the presumptive cases or the probable cases were counted. But right now, they're added in in one fell um, swoop. So this is New York and New Jersey, and I think we all know how difficult and what a difficult time both New York, New York and New Jersey have had. I call your attention to the axis. It goes up to 250,000 cases, so you can get a frame of how we're talking about some of the other metro areas. Next slide. This is the 25 metro areas, the top 25 metro areas, and you can only see the New York metro area in this slide. Um, again, the access goes up to about 300,000, includes the New Jersey um, part of the metro area as well as part of some other Connecticut. Next slide. But if I take New York out, and the reason I wanted to do that, now the axis is one-tenth of the previous axis. So that previous axis, the previous slide, 300,000. This slide, 30,000. So that will give you a frame of reference for some of these other metros. The reason I wanted to show you this is this is cumulative cases, and we are still tracking very closely the issues in Chicago and Boston. But on this slide, I hope you can see the yellow line. That is Detroit. Um, and Detroit, and this mayor of Detroit has really done an extraordinary job, and the people of Detroit have done an extraordinary job with their social distancing. The other line I want to call your attention to here. This is New Orleans. And I, I think, frankly, I was concerned about the New Orleans because they had a lot of pre-existing comorbidities. Um, they only they have two or three major hospitals, but a large cover a very large area, a geographic area. And that other blue line that you can see, it's down right here. That's the Seattle line, um, and you can see that their response because of the nursing home alert. They were one of the first states and the first metro areas to really move to social distancing. And so they've really never had a peak like many of the other metros. Next slide. Then I just want to take you through some of these new case graphics. That was cumulative cases. This is daily cases. And obviously there's a lot of variability and variability in reporting, but you get a sense over time when you look at daily cases. So New Orleans is on the on panel on your left and Baton Rouge on your right. You can see clearly New Orleans about a month ago, very low levels, probably less than 50 cases, large peak and spike around the beginning of April and they have come down and they have it down to very few cases. Again, I, I showed you before how the, both their syndromic cases have come down as well as their actual case work, number of cases. Next slide. This is Seattle. So you can see they had a much lower peak. And this is what we talk about flattening the curve. This is what flattening the curve looks like. It becomes a longer, slower decline, but it never gets very high and then goes back down. Next slide. And then this is Detroit. And we always look at the metros as a consolidated. So this is both Wayne and Oakland in Michigan. And we really want to thank the mayor for the incredible job that they have done to really ensure that everyone is receiving the adequate health care and testing. And they've done quite a good job um, with testing in Michigan. But all of these states, Louisiana and and um, New York have tested um, 30,000 per million inhabitants. Those are some of our highest numbers um, across the board. And next slide. And so the president talked about um, the case fatality rates, um, and we really we've lost a lot of Americans to this disease. And we pray and hope for each one of them that are in the hospitals and the excellent care. What does this graph illustrate? Is the amazing work of the American people to really adhere to social distancing. This was some. This was nothing we had ever attempted to do as a nation. 
and the world hadn't attempted to do. But they were able to de decrease the number of cases so that in general, most of the metro areas never had an issue of complete crisis care all of their hospitals in the region. And so you can see our case fatality rate is about half to a third of many of the other countries. Does anybody really believe this number? Does anybody really believe this I, I put China on there so you could see how basically unrealistic this could be. Um, when highly developed healthcare delivery systems of the United Kingdom and France and Belgium, Italy and Spain with extraordinary doctors and nurses and equipment have case fatality rates in the 20s up to 45 and Belgium is extraordinarily um, competent healthcare delivery system and then China at 0.33. Um, you realize that these numbers, even, and this includes the doubled number um, out of Wuhan. And so I want it really to put it in perspective, but I wanted you also to see how great the care has been for every American that has been hospitalized. Um, and the extraordinary work of our doctors and nurses and our laboratorians on the front line who have been doing an excellent job. Next slide. And then we also wanted to show. Does anybody believe that? Does anybody put that slide back to you? Does anybody believe that? This number? Does anybody believe that? 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 Does anybody almost six weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I was telling you what Italy was showing to us and what France was telling to us and the warnings that they gave to us and said, be very careful. There's an extraordinary high mortality among people with pre-existing conditions. And we used their information to bring that to the American people. That came, that alert, that alert before we even had significant cases came from our European colleagues on the front line. And that's why we keep coming back to how important in a pandemic and a new disease, it's really critical to have that level of transparency because it changes how we work as a nation. It allowed us on, on over March 15th to make an alert out there about vulnerable individuals and really the need to protect them. And my call out to millennials to really protect their parents, protect their grandparents, and get that information out to everyone, that there were pre-existing conditions that put people at greater risk. That information came from our European colleagues who were in the midst of their battle themselves. And so there is never an excuse to not share information. When you are the first country to have an outbreak, you really have a moral obligation to the world to not only talk about it, but provide that information that's critical to the rest of the world to really respond to this credibly. And I really want to thank our European colleagues who worked so hard to get us that information, even in the midst of their own tragedies. And I think that really shows how important transparency is. And we go to the next slide. We can show you this really encouraging and great news. So we know that fatalities will continue to lag because people are in hospitals still and some are still in, in, in intensive care units. But these covert-like illnesses, this is our hospitalizations that are related to flu per 100,000 Americans. Um, this is this year's flu season and you can see our, our COVID-like illnesses, um, and this is all of them, um, probable and confirmed cases, our hospitalizations are declining. Now that I showed you metros that have made tremendous progress. And we've been up here many times talking about it being six, 10, 15 additional cities. And now we're really just focused on Chicago and Boston and Massachusetts and really some issues that Providence is starting to improve now as their relationship to the two large outbreak cities. But this is really reassuring to us that the progress we're making um, across the country against this disease. And I just really want to conclude by thanking again the American people for making these type of graphics possible. Thank the data team who put these together for me. So they are working um, to about 3.30 every morning to make sure that we have the most up-to-date information. That's the data that goes to our supply chain individuals to ensure that every hospital and every state and every community has what they need based on data um, and to make sure that we're serving the needs of the American people as effectively as possible. Thank you, Mr. President.
the